What is up guys? Welcome to the channel. My name's Micah and today we are calculating just how dangerous motorcycles are. We are going to figure out exactly what your chance of death is should you choose to ride these things in your life. Now whether you've been riding motorcycles for 60 minutes or 60 years, you've probably had a random stranger, somebody you totally have never seen in your life, come up to you and say, motorcycles are dangerous. And it's like, well, I compared to what? You know, compared to sitting on your couch at home, sure, it's a hundred times more dangerous than that. But how dangerous is it when we compare it to something more relative, say cars and automobiles? So that's what we're also gonna calculate, is your chance of death from driving or riding in a car or automobile, and then we'll calculate the numbers for motorcycles. And calculating both of those numbers, you know, your chance of death in a car or automobile versus the motorcycle, that's gonna help us out in a few different ways. Firstly, it'll be something relative that we can compare that motorcycle dangerous deadly number to. Secondly, it will exactly let us know how much more dangerous motorcycles are than cars. And these numbers that we calculate here are just gonna be the averages across the board, across the whole country of the United States. But calculating that baseline, that average, that mean is essential in order for us to calculate more statistics. You know, if we wanted to calculate how dangerous different types of motorcycles are, how rider skill level can help you avoid death. So this today is kind of the first step that we need to do. So this should be super fun and kind of eye-opening to you guys. So I'll get my big dry erase board out here and I'll write all the numbers out so you guys can kind of follow along and see exactly how we're calculating this. Well, and it's starting to rain. That's awesome. So first we'll calculate all the numbers for cars and then we'll switch over and do the motorcycles. So the first two numbers that we need are the number of total drivers that we had on the road in a year's time and then the total number of deaths in automobiles in that same year. And 2023 is the most recent year I could find all of this data on. So the number of tragedies that we had that year in or from automobiles was 33,003. Now, how many drivers did we have of those automobiles on the road? It was 254.5 million. So now what we're gonna do is take that number of deaths divided by the number of total automobile operators that we had on the road, and we're gonna get a decibel, and we'll kind of convert that, we'll read that as a percentage. So now this number that we get here from doing that, dividing the deaths by the drivers, that point zero 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 one two nine six seven, that is gonna be the percentage, your chance of death from driving and operating an automobile every year. Now, just so we're not dealing with minute small percentages, we're gonna take this number and we're gonna times it by 60. Because that would roughly be, you know, your whole life of driving. If you operated a car from ages 20 to 80, or whatever it may be, that's just a nice round number for us to multiply this decibel by. And we'll do the same for motorcycles, but taking that number times 60, then you get a good idea of what your total chance in your life is of dying from operating that vehicle? Our answer then is 0.8%. So that is our average grand answer for automobiles. So you have a 0.8% chance of dying from an automobile basically in your life. So everybody chime in if that number, that 0.8% is lower or higher than you thought it would be. And now let's do our calculations for the motorcycles. Had to towel off my board. It's getting rain all over it. Ugh, better scoot up here a little bit. And now for motorcycles, how many motorcyclists died in the year of 2023? 6,218 bikers 
kicked the bucket. And how many bikers total did we have on the road that year? 8.8 .8 million is the answer there. So now we're just going to do math just like we did for the cars. We're just going to take the deaths divided by the number of bikers. And that number is going to be 0 0.00070659. So with that being our yearly percentage chance of death, take it times that 60 coming to our grand total of 4.2 percent so if you ride a motorcycle basically your whole life you know 20 to 80 years old there is a 4.2 percentage chance of death while this does give us the averages right it gives us some baseline numbers there's certain things that we are all wondering now after seeing these numbers for me location comes to mind right off the bat like if you're in the middle of nowhere wyoming versus in los angeles california those two places certainly can't have the same level of danger you can't experience the same chance of death in Wyoming versus California, can you? And then this also does not factor in any skill or experience, right? With it being the averages. So one would assume that the longer that you operate an automobile or the longer that you ride a motorcycle, that experience and those skills that you are gaining, surely the longer you ride, your chance of death, that danger factor would have to go down for you in theory, right? Unless you just keep riding faster and harder every day as you learn more, maybe then your percentage chance of death does not go down. And then the type of motorcycle as well. That's something that I thought of while calculating this because the two bikes that we have here, you know, a dirt bike versus a thousand cc super sport. I mean, certainly you would assume that that one has to be more dangerous than that one, right? And a lot of those different things we can now calculate because we have these baseline numbers. And then after we calculate and get the numbers to, you know, how the type of motorcycle plays a part into the dangerous or chance of death that you may have. But none of those numbers would really mean anything without having this, because then we can calculate each of those numbers and say, oh, so being in a rural place, lowers your chance of danger or death or oh, driving a crotch rocket increases your chance of death. So and I do want to do some of those other calculations with you guys because some of this stuff is just kind of fun. Like I understand it's about a morbid topic, but at least it's good to know because I've heard so many times in my life people coming up that I don't even know. They walk right up to me and see that I have a motorcycle helmet or pulled up on a motorcycle and they just say it's dangerous. I'm going to die. I am stupid for writing that, you know, but it's never followed up with any statistics or any facts. You know, it's something that people just say. And I don't know about you, but I have never heard any of these numbers, ever seen anybody calculate them or get to definite answers or percentages, even if they are just average across the board. So this is fun and I'll do more of these if you guys like them. So to sum everything up and wrap it up, what did we learn today? Well, you're upping your chance of death by about 1% for every 15 years of motorcycling that you do. At the end of the day, motorcycles are 5.25 times more dangerous than cars. And at the end of the day, Yes, motorcycles are more dangerous to operate than a car, in theory, obviously. But it's not like it's straight suicidal. It is not a death wish. It is not a million times more dangerous than operating a car. So comment if you guys have any questions at all. Otherwise, like the video if this helped you out. Subscribe if you want to see more. And until next time.